Alright guys, so in this video we're checking out the HGLRC FD413 flight controller stack and it comes with all these parts here, I laid everything out. Pretty good documentation, it comes with instructions for the flight controller and you got your wiring diagrams for all the components here, we'll look at this a little closer later and as well as the diagram for the 4-in-1 ESC. Got your wiring looms for all the components, your XT30 connector, you have your uh, flight controller to ESD connector here, and you have your connector for your video transmitter to your flight controller. You have um, this one here has to have pins between the boards here, so you're using long metal screws to build up the stack, as well as um, you have all your nuts here, uh, O-rings and spacers to build up the stack. So these, these are bigger spacers are going between the boards, and then the, I think these O-rings go on the the bottom part of the board underneath the 401 ESC. So I'll put a little picture of what the stack looks like built up. Um, yeah, so you get your 401 ESC here, F4 flight controller here, and your um, video transmitter here. They're all 16 by 16 components. And you have your micro LFL connector for the video transmitter and the capacitor here. I think it's a 220 microfarad 35 volt capacitor. So um, everything here is 2 to 4S capable. I'll start off here with the uh, 4 one ESC. As you can see, um, M2 mounting holes. I think these are BB2 ECs, so D-Shot 600, um, BLLE S, not BLLE 32. You've got some capacitors here for filtration. And, and obviously you probably definitely want to use the additional capacitor there for additional filtration. So for your connections, you have your battery lead that goes here on the ends. You can see that the actual connector goes from one side, and then you can see it's copper plated over here, and it's the other. So should be a pretty good solid connection there if you solder that correctly. Same with the motor wires. Now you can see it's pretty tiny, but they do go on the side here. And this is actually pretty uh, expensive to uh, actually uh, build up. So. These are going to be pretty good connectors if you solder it up properly right on the side. It's not really meant to go on the top or the bottom. It's really meant to solder right on the side there. So that's going to what you want to do is you want to get some solder on the top and the bottom and solder your wire directly into that little groove right there and then get a nice connection. Even though it's a really, it does look like it's pretty tiny, um, it will hold up pretty good if you solder it up properly. And then for your connector to your flight controller, it's just going to be this guy here, and I think it only goes in one way. So you can see it goes in like this, and I think you have a red wire over here. Let me see if this is labeled or not. I'll just go with the diagram here. So you can see the battery connection is on the right side. So this is actually the flight controller side over here. So I'm going to plug in this side over here like this. So you'll make sure you follow the documentation. It goes like that. And so you got your motors 4, 3, 2, and 1, ground, and your um, battery connection here. Obviously, BLLE S, so there's no EC telemetry or anything like that. So it just you have your six wires going to your 401 EC. It's a 13 amp uh, 401 EC, and it bursts to 15 amps max. So you can see all the parameters here on the back of the car, 2 to 4S, 13 amps, 15 Amps per scene of up to 5 seconds, and it's uh, 3.2 grams, 16 by 16, and they're BB2 ESDs. So a quick look at the um, video transmitter. It goes up to 400 milliwatts. It's a uh, IRC TRAMP protocol video transmitter. It uses a micro FL connector, and pretty basic connections here. So you get your micro FL connector there, and then you have 5 volts ground. RX for your IRC tramp and your video in and has your chart here. So I think it's 48 channels, I believe. And as typical, you have a single button operation here and some LEDs. And it does explain short press to change channels and long press to change power. I think it's a two second press to change bands. But this is what the uh, video transmitter looks like up close. Your micro flow connector there. Got your pads for your 5 volts ground, RX, and video in here. But you can, of course, use the included connector if you want. 
I suppose if you want to save some weight and just do, do direct soldering, you could do that and just disconnect or desolder the connector. But the connector here is there available for you. I think it's mostly for convenience. So I think it goes like, let's see here. It goes like this. Yeah. Five volts is going to be up on top like that. And M2 holes, of course, just like on the other components. Okay, so here is the flight controller, and I believe the proper orientation is going to be like this. Let's see the arrow like that, and I think this is the top of the board. All of your pads for soldering and everything is this on, as labeled here. It's going to be difficult to see on camera, but I'll point out some of the highlights here. This is the bottom of the board with the micro USB port here. You got your uh, Betaflight OSD as a 5 volt 2 amp regulator on this board, and as you can see, nothing is going to be soldered on the bottom. Uh, 16 by 16 amp, of course, and M2 mounting holes, pretty compact. Got your bootloader button over here, MPU 6000 gyro, and your F4 CPU there. Okay, so a quick look at the wiring diagram. They do include one here in the package. It's very tiny, as you can see. And the pads are labeled, but it's not super easy to tell what they are, and I'll just try and point out some of the highlights here. So, on the top here is going to be the connectors for your receiver. So you have um, RX1 here, S bus, 5 volts. I think this one here is ground, 3.3 volts, RX3 and TX3. Yeah, so on this side here on the left, it looks like you have connectors here for your video transmitter. So 5 volts ground. Um, you have your RX for the RC tramp and uh, the video in, or video out, I'm sorry, to the video transmitter. And then you have your connectors for your camera here on the, the bottom here. So it's going to be ground, 5 volts, and your video in over there. And of course on the bottom here is your connector to the 4-in-1 ESC with the wiring loom. And you have um, on the right side here, you have your connectors for your LED and your buzzer. Now there's two connectors here that you see that aren't wired to anything. It's this S5 and VBAT. And that's the main reason why I ended up getting this uh, stack here. I wasn't planning on reviewing this. Um, uh, this has been out for a while, but I decided I was going to use the stack in this 4-inch build that I've been uh, holding on to for a while here. I was planning to use the Flywoo stack, which is... 16 by 16 stack as well in this build, but uh, I wanted to use GPS and that only has two UARTs and no other means of remapping to uh, use GPS in that one. So I abandoned using that stack in this build because I want to use GPS. I need two UARTs, need one for Crossfire, uh, I need one for the GPS, and then I need something for uh, the IRC tramp protocol for the video transmitter. So I I could have possibly just manually changed the channels on the video transmitter by using the Flywoo stack, but I still wanted that feature. So I would ended up getting this HDLR stack instead. And the reason we can use, even though it has two hard UARTs, you can use soft serial to create another UART for the um, IRC tramp protocol or the video for uh, changing your video um, VTX channels remotely. And so that's what we're going to do here in, in that build. And I'll, I'll just sort of briefly, briefly explain how you do that. Um, on S5 here, or motor pad 5, you just remap that to a soft serial. So you enable soft serial and then enable this as a, as a uh, so basically a soft serial UART. And then that will be connected to your video transmitter instead of the TX here. That's on the, on the, the pads over here. And then instead of um, using that for your uh, video transmitter, you'll use that for either your one of your receivers. I think in this case, it's going to use this for the, for GPS and then uh, Crossfire will be over here on the top of your, on these pads. So I'll have Crossfire, GPS, and then this one, this pad here, will be used for the IRC tram protocol for the video transmitter. Okay, so let's going to give everyone here a, an idea of what everything weighs. And this is without any of the connectors. So let's start with the 4NEC. By itself, it's uh, 3.2 grams. Your flight controller by itself is 2.5 grams. Video transmitter by itself is 1.4, and then 
the three boards all together. 7.13. We'll throw on the connectors. It comes in about 7.95. Then the micro full connector in 8.58. Capacitor 9.53. XT30 12.24. And then, of course, all the parts here that we're going to need to build the stack up. So, throw all these on here together. 12.74 screws, all these nuts and spacers, everything here you're going to need to build this up. So it's all weight that we need to account for. Alright, so grand total with everything for the whole stack that you're going to use in your build, it's going to be about 16 grams. So it's pretty good for a complete electronic stack for your, um, your little micro build. Okay, so you're definitely going to see this stack in this build. I promise it's definitely going to go in this one. I finally um, have all the parts except for the GPS. I'm still waiting for the GPS uh, that actually goes with this. So once I get that, I think I'll have everything. I do have the motors. It's going to be the Beta Flight, uh, Beta, sorry, the Beta FPV 1505 motors. Uh, I probably have put a picture of that up on my Instagram at some point, and that'll be in this build. So sorry it's taking so long. I know some of you guys have been waiting for this, but yeah. Uh, I'm at the mercy of waiting for parts like this by everyone else. So, coming soon, so stay tuned for that, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.